Hello and welcome back to Something Else Amiga. What do we have on the show today? Today we got a package in from Florida for Dile. It must be Italian. For Mr. John. I have had so many Amiga repairs, I forget what I'm supposed to do to this or what it even is. Inside, the note says, Chris, I really messed up my Amiga 500 Rev 6. I wanted to use an expansion to get one mega chip RAM, but instead I ended up destroying the pads on JP2. Can you take on this project? John, from down south, Florida. He says, hey, I managed to salvage pin 1 and 2, so I was able to get the Amiga 500 back to a half mega chip, half mega slow. 3 is gonzo, so no one mega chip. I'll include the RAM expansion board. The board is from Amiga Kit. And has a jumper, so you don't have to fool with the other slice. I got the kit from a guy in Ukraine to install a hard drive in 8 megs, thus the need for 1 mega chip. Here we go. And his return address and phone number. I'll put that aside. We'll take a peek what we got here. Yay! Foam with someone else's dog hair. And that's some old ass foam. Wow, talk about uh, just making it. The, the Amiga cut into the box, so I'm going to have to repack this. While padded front and back, uh, it wasn't padded rear, and the board is, well, looks okay. Uh, crushed here, the vidiot got smashed over. I'm not touching it because they tend to shatter. 8372A Agnes from 1990. Wobble pop, and take a peek. Now they only have Rev 8s online, but similar to Shizzle. Original showy caps and Elna's. The board is extremely clean. Okay, right here is JP2. Now, on this board, it's actually right here. But, the bottom and middle pad are bonded by default. So if I click that, you'll see it goes to Agnes, goes to the CPU line, and it goes to pin 2. Okay? Now, when I cut that and I go to this one, this one goes right around it. So this and this need to be bonded together. But we got to cut this. So, pin one, go, this just simply bond these two right here, and that fixes your jumper. However, on the other side, somebody destroyed JP4 also. It has the world's largest acid core solder blob. Houston, we have a small problem. This is great. That is stock form. That is just missing in action. However, this basically runs right to here. It's okay. We could blob that, but I gotta get that center mof and that connect. I don't know how that is done. And uh, JP4 it got a stab right in it. I don't know what's going on with that. But JP4 on the other side is a double, not a triple. And I have to really take a look at that. Also, JP5's had some solder blobs on it. I, I don't know what's going on for. I'm going to have to dig in there. And i got to break out my sprint layout files. Because, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a poo-poo when you're working on these things. On my board here, the one I have, the JP2 is over to the side. So the problem is these are bonded by default. This one I need to have laid out. And you will see here, oops, yeah. You will see here that it goes, oops. Come on, I said test. I'm not showing the bottom layer, so I'll show you in a second. Alright, so there's JP2. It goes to the CPU, top line. Also carries the Gary XRAM signal right there. So I can either run a wire to JP2 or this little point right here. This solder blob off up here on JP2. I don't know if you're going to see it too well. Just because the angle of Dookie is right here where I'll be working. Probably right in your way. 
All right. Here's your JP. That center hole, that goes through right here. That's your center hole right here. Here's the destroyed pad. This is normally the bonded one, the center and the bottom here, 512. That's what was fixed. Uh, this one and this one are supposed to be bonded because you slice here with a razor to break the original cut, or trace cut, join, trace join, and then you solder the center and the top together. This is your top pin. So I can simply put a pin in here with a wire right to here. And I had some singles in here. There they are. Right there. I'm just going to take one of these out. That is going to get a wire right to that above the O. Wow, this is really crusty. And as figures, there are issues with it. There's so much flux. There's a metal ball. Look at this. So, this might be the cause of why it wasn't working. Where my finger is, right here, I don't know if it's ever going to focus. There's a metal ball between those two pins, right where my finger is right here. They're bridged together. Why? Why are they bridged together? They're not supposed to be. Let's, uh, let me... Hey! That's better. The two pins that were grounded were a ground plane and whatever this is on the end, which is near this jumper. Here's one of my RAM boards, A501. Tested good, October 2023. Okay, I just confirmed it on the Amiga 2000 R6 schematics. Amiga kit board or not, JP7A has to be cut to modify the XRAM signal to not have it pull high so it's not have it pull go low so it's always pulled high so it's not addressed as slow RAM anymore so you don't have to solder anything you just gotta slice it so I'll remove this thing first unit is off it's plugged in but it's off I'm gonna slice this trace Make sure I'm not beeping. Test it first. Oh, there's that jumper. <laughs> Bottom two, middle, nothing. Oops, nothing, nothing. Okay, turn the unit on. Without the memory board, we should get 512K RAM, like we did. The noise you're hearing is a charger I have for my solar rigs. My battery took a dump. Memory, half mega chip. Turn it off. First, I'm going to test it with my board. This is a real A501 from Commodore. Just to test, because I'd rather blow my stuff up than someone else's. Here we go. Yep, comes right on. Look at that. You need an XRAM signal cut. Alright, so this should be 1 mega chip RAM, I hope. Let's see, memory, bingo, 1 mega chip. Alright, now, turn this off. Remove my A501 and put in this board. Now I believe this board jumper is for if you want it back fast, slow, slow, half and half. Right? Turn it on. Yep. Came right on. Bingo. You gotta slice JP7A regardless of what it said. One mega chip. Anyway, that was an easy fix. Uh, the pad was a little messed up, but putting that peg in there gave me enough room to solder a wire back to the little dot above the O of OSC on that board. And a nice, easy fix. Uh, to test this, we're gonna, this is a PAL unit. So, my original state of the art, self-booting I wrote on it, self-booting. Even in cursive, that was probably 91, 92, I don't know, probably 92, 93. Here we go. Floppy's gone wild. There we go. And our Mega 500 now has one mega chip because this needs one mega chip to work. And she's working. I will run it through a full ATK real quick. We're just going to wait for that floppy to stop accessing. 
didn't, I cut it off mid-flight. We're going to fire up ATK one more time with the unit in its dude. Cool thing is, if you take this out, it's half mag like it was. And uh, memory test all RAM. Let her rip, tater chip. Put my 501 back in its anti-static bag. And it's tested again. I can update that date. But 2023, good enough. We'll put that to the side so I forget to do that. We'll let this go to about three, maybe four. I'm sure it's going to be fine because it's brand new RAM and the four chips on the board are fine too. You know, you could also get away with soldering the four uh, 256K chips right on the board here. And you don't even really need the caps and you wouldn't even need a belly slot. 3.3, 3.4, we are testing A-OK -okay on the RAM. So, bing, bing. Where's my note? Yep, you don't have to fool with JP7. Yeah, well guess what? I don't know what's going on with that board, but JP7 jumper here didn't matter because it didn't work before without slicing it. You saw, even my own board wouldn't work. So it should have been half and half, but when you when you have JP2 re-jumpered, so XRAM is flipped around, you can't go back. You have to go all the way. So it's just a razor slice. You could solder it back if you really had to have slow RAM, which nobody wants. But I will put your jumper back on. La 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 la. Memory. So one mega chip, jumper's in my hand. It doesn't matter which way you go, you're still one meg, which is what you want. Now you can do, Mr. John, you can do your 68,000 one meg thing. Now remember, Kickstart 1.3 kind of sucks eggs. You might want to go with Kickstart 2 or 3.1 now that you have one meg of RAM because it's it's more gooder because you can double mouse button select boot to an external device but you're in a 500 but you know, you know what I mean? Your options are endless with Pi Storms and RGB to HDMI's and now IDE controllers on your 68,000 with 8 megs of fast RAM 9 total because of your 1 meg mod here even an A314 coprocessor dude there's so many options you can do for these uh, wedge machines that are just unique to them alone you can still do them to the big box Amigas also as you have seen on this channel before but, Mr. John is back in business with a repaired pole on JP2. Put a stripper pole on there, ran a wire, sliced JP7, double checked everything. Good to go. Another Amiga has been saved from the half meg land. Anyway, that was a quick, easy repair. I'm glad it was something simple, and I'm glad I was able to help out. We'll get this back to Mr. John down south as soon as possible. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.